In this video you will learn what is Angular Injection Token and how you can use it. And typically inside Angular we are working a lot with injecting of our services. For example, let's say that we need our user service that I created here. This is just a service with one method inside our app component. So typically we will write here constructor and inject it with private keyword like private user service and this is users service and now here inside our app component we can just console log our user service to check that it is really there but in order for this code to work we must jump in our app module and add to our providers our service and this is user service as you can see here inside console we're getting our console log user service and this is our user service with injected http but the code that we wrote here is just a sugar. This line provider's user service is actually something more. And for Angular, it looks like this. We have here an array of providers and we want to add here our user service. This is why here we can write word provide and here user service, comma, and here will be use class, user service. So this is exactly how it looks for Angular. And as you can see in browser, it works exactly the same. And actually here we have not only use class, but also use value, use factory for different cases. But it is important to understand what is provide and what is use class. Use class is obvious, this is the class that we want to register here. But provide is not just used like a class, this is our unique identifier, which actually means here we can simply write a string, for example, users service. And it will work, but as you can see in browser, we're getting an error that user service is not provided. Why is that? Because here we defined it with this user service string. And now we must use it differently inside our app component. And in order to do that, we must use the creator inject. And inside we must provide our user service string that we just defined it. As you can see now in browser, it works in exactly the same way, but now we are throwing inside this user service by this user service string. This is nothing more but just a unique identifier because all our things that we are injecting must be unique for the injector. And actually this inject plays really nicely when you have some config what you want to pass to the component. For example, let's say that for different modules you want to configure an API URL differently for our service. And we can do that inside our app module. So here what we want to do first, we want to define an interface. So here let's say that we have an interface and it will be user service config interface and this is just an object with a single api url and this is a string now here inside our providers we can define one more key and we can name it user service config and here as a second parameter instead of use class we can just write use value and provide here an object and here we can provide api url for example http localhost 3004 slash users in this case here we are providing some config as a value to our module. And now in any place inside our module we can inject it. For example inside our app component or inside our service. We can write here inject again just like we did before. And we are writing here that we need user service config. And we are getting here our private config which is a user service config interface. And now here let's console log it to check that it is working. As you can see in browser here is our console log with API URL which actually means we successfully configured with the help of inject our config through provider. Which actually brings us to injection tokens inside Angular. As you can see here we used just strings but they must be unique. But obviously strings are not really unique and we can easily make a typo and then it won't work. This is why we have injection tokens. And this is what we can use as a unique identifier instead of our strings. This is why here on the top we can create injection tokens. For example, we need a token for our user service and let's name it user service underscore token. And here we are calling new injection token which is coming from the Angular. And here we are defining what we are getting here. 
And this is our user service. And as you can see here, we must provide a value inside. And here what I want to provide is an empty string. Now we can copy paste injection token and create one more token. This is user service config token. And inside here we are providing the interface user service config interface. And again here I wrote inside an empty string. And at this point you might say, okay, but we're providing here an empty string, which means it won't work because they will be referencing the same empty string. But this is not the case because injection tokens are always unique. This is just some description that you can provide inside. Now here on the bottom, instead of our strings, we can use injection tokens. This is why here user service token and here we have user service config token. But this is not all, we must jump inside our component and use them here inside our injection. So here we will have user service token and user service config token. As you can see in browser, we don't have any changes at all, but now we used injection token instead of just plain strings. Which actually means you need injection tokens inside Angular to generate a unique identifier for things that you want to provide inside injector. And actually, if you are interested to know how to improve performance of your Angular application by using ng-zone, make sure to check this video also.